In today's video analysis, we've got Grigor Dimitrov's forehand, and we're going to be looking at the things that make it great. And I don't expect you to be able to do everything, but there are a few things that I expect my students to be able to do, and anybody who is watching at home as well. So the first thing that we are going to look at is how in the preparation phase, there is no independent movement of the hand and racket. We're going to look at his coil, okay, and we don't even call it a turn anymore. It's a coil. Look at how the hands are staying in front of the torso. And this massive delay that we get on his forehand and every pro forehand. So despite popular belief, taking the racket back early doesn't seem to be what any of the players actually do. And it's not until he's reached about three-fourths of his full shoulder turn that he's going to disconnect the racket from the body and make what people consider the pro forehand loop, which is really just a racket drop to the height of the ball. Now, we're going to see that his racket face gets pretty closed and his pat the dog position, right, the degree of pat, it all has to do with the grips. Some players, their racket face will be pointing to the back fence. Some of them, it'll even be pointed more to the ground. It's all personal preference and grip style. Now, in the initiation of the forward swing, I want you to see how the height of the hand is in line with the ball, okay? You will almost never see the hand well below the ball in pro tennis. You will also usually never see it much higher either. It's usually going to be in and around the same height as the ball or slightly below or slightly above in some instances. So despite popular belief, right, you do not need to get way under the ball to generate heavy amounts of topspin. Now, in the initiation of the forward swing, let's look at the angle of the wrist through the contact point. Okay, we're gonna see it again in slow motion, and we're gonna slow it down right when he gets to that last frame in the slot. Notice how the wrist is back at contact point in what I call the L for leverage position. And if we take this back, it's a byproduct of the wrist being extremely loose and relaxed at the top of the backswing, right? There's no flex here, right? And we can take it back even further, right? Watch how the wrist kind of just falls as dead weight. I say, let it fall, free fall, lose all tension. And we set at the height of the ball. The non-hitting hand is also out and parallel with the baseline, right? The upper body is also turned past the hips and the body goes first, right? The hips have uncoiled, the bigger muscles are through the shot and the arm is coming behind as dead weight, okay? But it's not a flicking of the wrist and we're gonna see how the wrist actually stays back throughout the contact point, slowing it down even more. The wrist is still back and it's going to stay back until the ball, it's still back, has left the strings, okay? The contact point is literally happening in like one 250th of a second. It's too fast for anyone to see. It's too fast for you to get around the ball, like some people say, or really to make any sort of circumference around it with your racket head, okay? The ball's basically just going to come right off your strings. So it is important to relax the wrist after in the follow through, right? We want a fluid motion through the ball. We don't want to stop our momentum, but there is no wrist snap occurring until well after the ball has left the strings. And we have the modern finish where he generally tends to wrap around and underneath the opposite shoulder. And notice in the uncoiling phase how his shoulders have flipped positions 180 degrees. If we take this back, right, his front, his right shoulder is now underneath his chin. And if we look in the setup, 
we're going to see that the opposite occurs. So the pro forehand uncoiling is 180 degrees with the torso, but a lot of people only uncoil about halfway. They'll stop when their chest faces the net, but just watch how this shoulder is going to actually end up underneath his chin. And that's the range of motion that's really needed to get your entire upper body through the shot, okay? Boom, right? We don't just stop at the net. If there was a bullseye at the center of his chest, it would now be pointing toward about right there. So that's the range of motion that needs to be covered. Now, one last thing, the shoulders level in the take back, right? It's very important, and I emphasize this a lot with my players, that you need to have great posture. You want your shoulders level as you uncoil with the torso. You want to keep the head completely still and the shoulders level, okay? And this is how you're going to have clean connections, stay on balance, and uh, not have too much, you know, flinging around with the upper body in the forward swing. So I hope you uh, can learn a few things from this video and uh, from Dimitrov. It's, uh, if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for us as well to do these few things that I think every player can easily implement in their game. In any event, thanks for tuning in and uh, use what you've learned to modernize your game.